Prabhupada. So what I want to give you a little taste of is what it's like to have, be a helpless patient in the hospital and really have no control over your body. You know, when you're a helpless patient, you just had brain surgery or any kind of surgery and you can't move, you don't have control over your own body. You can't sit up yourself. You can't feed yourself. You can't raise your hand yourself. You can't do anything for yourself. So I'm going to give you a little, a very small taste of what that's like. What I want you to do first is raise your hand high in the air, but I want you to raise the hand that's your non-dominant hand. So if you're a righty, you need to raise your left hand. Go ahead, high up, <coughs> as high and straight as you can do it. Now this first time, I'm going to tell you that now you have control. So whenever you feel like putting it down, you either get tired, you have an itch, for whatever reason you'd like to put it down, go ahead and put your hand down. You guys are all young and healthy and strong, so pretend you're tired and go ahead and, and don't be here. I'll put your hand down. Okay, it's not a contest. So like, I'm going to win, I'm going to win. Okay, this next time, instead of you having control over your own body and when you get to put it down, this time I'm in control of you. So you're going to go ahead and lift it up again, really high and straight, but this time, you cannot put it down until I say you can put it down. So, I'm going to tell you a story while your hand's up in the air. <laughs> One thing they did for me when I was in the hospital, they really wanted to make me do things that would, quote, build up my strength. I think that was my least favorite term of anything when I was in the hospital. They put me in this chair. I think it was called the neuro chair. I called it the torture chair. They put me in this chair, it was kind of like a lazy boy, but the higher up they would put it, the more I'd have to support my own neck. And when you've been lying there for, you know, weeks and not moving at all, you have no strength in your neck. So every little movement was so painful. They put me in this chair, and the second they put me in the chair, I'd be like screaming in pain. But I couldn't scream because I had no voice. So I would just be in pain. They would leave me there for two hours. And they said, they said they can only move me once every two hours. Other nurses would lean me back a little bit more so I was a little bit more comfortable. And if you're going to build up someone's strength, you don't you know, start like this. You start like this, right? So, but that was one of the things that they did. And they would leave me there. And it would be more than two hours sometimes because they wouldn't always come back. So now, you guys, uh, nobody looks very tired. But you can go ahead and put down your hands. Did you feel anything? Did you start feeling your arm again? So imagine if your arm had to be up for two hours and you just literally did not have the strength to put it down. So it might be in pain, they're helpless, they're scared. They're, maybe they can't breathe very well. And you're a stranger coming into their room with this happy thing. Oh, let's go. I'm, I'm so excited. It's my first time on the job. I'm going to put you in your, on your room. Let's go. So you can see the, the big obstacle here, that you have two people in doing a project together. One person wants to do it. The other person does not want to do it and has a very negative and justifiably so reasons for not wanting to do it. <coughs> So your trick then is to get through that obstacle and get them to cooperate with you. And I'll give you some tips for that in a little bit. But in the meantime, we're going to do another exercise that's going to give you another little taste of what it's like if somebody cannot breathe very well. So Many of the patients that you're transporting will have some sort of compromised airway. Either they're just really congested, maybe they have pneumonia or something that makes it really congested, or maybe they had a tracheotomy put in. What I want to give you an idea of, I want to give you a very small taste of what it's like to have a compromised airway. So first, you're going to take five deep breaths without the special tools, which from now on I'll refer to as STRAWS, <laughs> by, the, by the acronym STRAWS. So take five deep breaths without the tool. Don't have fun when we don't need anybody passing out, just five, five normal, normal breaths. OK. 
Okay, now go ahead and put one end of the straw in your mouth. Plug your nose, because I don't know if I can trust you not to breathe through your nose. And take five deep breaths. But again, don't pass out through the straw. Did you feel a difference? It's harder to breathe through a straw, right? If you didn't feel it or don't think you felt it enough, go home and try with the smaller straw. You know, but, but I think it's important that you have that feeling of what it's like to breathe through a compromised airway. So you add that to the list of things that your, your patients might be experiencing. This is a very important one. No matter how old your patients are, everybody has something from their childhood that still scares them. Does that scare anybody? In here, you guys, none, a few of you have fear of needles. Many, that's pretty common, so a lot of your patients will probably have a fear of needles. Now, if you've ever had been poked with a needle, and I know you all have, the actual pain of the needle isn't that bad. Like you've had worse pain by, I'm sure I've had worse pain by getting scratched by my dogs, but I'm not afraid of my dogs, so it's okay. You know, it's, the pain is not that bad, it's the fear of the pain that's so bad. So it's always important to remember that everybody has that fear. series we'll hear more patient stories and provider feedback. New videos will be launched on the 26th of each month. Subscribe now so you don't miss a thing.